In this lesson, we are going to discuss the calculation of the centroid of a two-dimensional region. And in particular, we're going to use double integrals to um, determine the location of the centroid. Now, the centroid is like the center of, uh, of area or the center of a shape. Okay, You can kind of think of it as a two-dimensional um, version of a center of mass, if you like. I guess you can think of the centroid as a balance point, okay? A point where, um, you, where the, the shape kind of um, has its behavior concentrated um, along that point. So let's have a look at the uh, following question. We're given a region that lies in the first quadrant of the xy plane, and it's bounded by this circle here. A is a positive constant. So essentially, you've got a quarter of a disk, and we want to find the centroid, the centroid of that region. So a good um, way of starting these problems is to draw a picture. OK, so here's a, a rough sketch of our region. And what I would like to do is use double integrals to calculate the, the center of that region, the centroid. So how do I do it? Well, essentially, we're going to use these formulae here. OK, so you can see. Um, we, we've got some double integrals for those um, coordinates. So x bar, y bar would be the coordinates of our centroid. But with centroids, you can sometimes simplify using symmetry arguments. Okay? In this particular shape, you can see that there's a line of symmetry here. So what do I know about the location of my centroid? Well, the centroid must lie on that, that line y equals x, right? Now, that observation can save us a lot of time because you only have to calculate one of these uh, coordinates from here, and then you, you know the other one, they must be equal. OK, so let's label it. Let's say this region's omega. Now, to set up the double integral, I'm going to label the bounding curves. Okay, so this curve here is the following. Another bounding curve is the y-axis. That's the line y uh, is the x-axis. That's the line y equals zero, and this is another bounding curve, the y-axis. That's just the curve x equals zero. So let's describe omega in terms of those bounding functions. OK, so how do I do it? Well, there's a number of ways of doing it. There's a number of ways of doing it. In fact, you could use polar coordinates to describe this region. But I'm not going to do that. Okay, I'll leave that for you to do if you're um, comfortable with polar coordinates. I'm going to use this vertical line and you can see the vertical line cuts, uh, cuts into the region at this line and it leaves the region at this line. So our y would be between 0 and root a squared minus x squared. Now the next question is if I move this vertical line side to side, how far along do I move it to sweep out the, um, the, the curve, or the um, region? Well, I want to go between 0 and A. So that would be the other part of my description. OK. Now, with this description, what I can do is set up either one of these 
um, double integrals. Okay, so first of all, let's let's have a look. Um, let's just choose this one. Now here you can see I'm dividing by this particular double integral over omega dA. Now that just represents the area, the area of omega. Now our omega is a pretty simple region. It's just the quarter of a, of, of a certain disk. So I can easily calculate the area. Okay, so for this particular part, I don't really even need to calculate a double integral. I can just calculate the area of the region, right? So, let's say I wanted to calculate my x component of the center of mass. It's just this. So let's try to do these calculations. First of all, the denominator is just easy because this is just the area of omega and, the, and we can easily calculate that. Area of omega. So if this is um, essentially, if it's got radius A, so it's just one quarter pi a squared. Okay. So now let's look at this double integral and see if we can symmetry and see if we can calculate this. Okay, so I want to use these as my limits of integration and I want to put the constants on the outside. Okay, so I have the dy before the dx because the y is sort of between these two functions, the inside limits of integration. So now all I really need to do is do the inside integral first and then move on to the outside integral. So, so let's have a go at that. Well, let's integrate x with respect to y. So imagine all the x's are fixed. So I'm just going to get something like um, x, y. Okay, so if I sub in for y, I'm going to get the following. So that's going to come in there, y equals 0, that's not going to add anything to it. So now I'm down to a single integration. Now generally um, integrals with square roots are quite tricky, but this one isn't too bad because I've got this sort of um, x, and I can use that to my advantage. Now you'll see that this x is almost the derivative of what's in the square root signs. Okay, so what I can do is integrate. So think of this square root as a power of one half. That power of one half is going to go to something like three on two. And now all I really need to do is touch up the front. So when I differentiate this, I'll get what's inside the integral sign here. Okay, so that if I differentiate this, the 3 on 2 is going to come to the front and a minus 2x is going to come to the front. So what I um, want to do is multiply through by minus 1 third. Okay, so if you check that, um, when you differentiate, you'll actually just get a, a, an x out the front. Okay, so if you sub in now for x equals a and x equals 0, well, the first term is going to give you 0. And the second term is just going to give you something like um, one third 
a squared to the power 3 on 2, which is just 1 third a cubed. Okay? All right, so let's combine those and find our center of mass. So essentially to find the x bar, it's just this divided by this. And I know by symmetry, y bar's got to be the, the, the same value. No, because well, no, you've got a negative sign here. So when you put that in, you've got a negative, you've got minus, minus one third times that. Yeah? Yep. Okay, so, so if I divide one into the other, it's just... So what I'm going to get there, I'm going to get something like 4a on... 3 pi. We happy with that? <laughs> now by symmetry, y bar's got to be the same as x bar because it lies on that line of symmetry. Okay? So hence, or yeah, hence the center of mass of omega And we're done. Okay? Now, like I said before, you could use polar coordinates for that particular um, example. If you do use polar coordinates, then you would avo you avoid this sort of, sort of um, integration here that some people may go, well, I don't like that very much. Okay? So a good exercise would be for you to go back and do this, the same problem using polar coordinates and see how it simplifies. Any questions so far? All right, let's look at the bigger picture. So here are the respective formulae. As far as doing the problems, it's always a good idea to sketch your region of integration or sketch your... your um, your, the shape that you want to find the centroid of because first of all it helps you geometrically understand the problem and secondly it helps you describe the boundaries the boundary curves okay very very important very important okay now another good idea is to always look for symmetry because it cuts the work in half okay so always look for symmetry look for lines of reflection Here's an example for you to do. Now, I must admit, there is no symmetry available for this problem. Sorry about that. But um, uh, have a go and um, see if you can determine the centroid of the region bounded by these curves. <laughs> 